What's going on everyone? How you doing? Ron here at Tech Tips to Go, Donut All Finance. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Pepe. If this is the coin to beat in terms of the best on-chain analytics, find me another one. This is the best. Uh, one of the best. One, two, three. Wow. So Pepe, um, before we get into the video, we're just going to do a quick donation to donor.finance. If you'd like to donate, please feel free to donate. If not, please just share, like, comment. Really helps with the donation and our mission to drive, to feed people those who are in need. So let's get into the video here. Let me do this first donation. Just show you how fast this is, okay? So connected MetaMask on ARB, and I'm just going to donate 0. 0. 0.004 let's say two and let's see how much that is four dollars and 81 cents let me click on donate let me approve this in metamask over here it's going to cost one penny for gas fees because arb our abstraction services on arb is pretty crazy so anyways that's it that's it for the donation um you're going to see this on chain right here you can see the donations here all on chain you're going to see this populate very soon so anyways let's get into the pepe on chain analytics shout out to one of the followers on twitter he wanted to know about on-chain analytics for sharing, but first let's get into Pepe. So when I talk about on-chain analytics, and for those of you who don't know what on-chain analytics means, basically everything on the blockchain is transparent. You can see exactly what happens in terms of what's on the blockchain. So unique addresses, the amount of Pepe or ERC-20 tokens going on and off in exchange, how many holders, how many holders of those actually have supply distribution, not just empty wallets or, you know, one, one person holding one Pepe, but what is the supply distribution based on the amount of holders, as well as, you know, how many ERC-20 supply uh, of Pepe is actually on the exchange, because that's a huge difference. If you see a large amount of Pepe on the exchanges, what does that mean? It doesn't mean a good thing. It means that probably someone is going to dump or a whale is going to dump. Also, uh, we, want to we want to take a look at supply. Is the supply flat? Is it deflationary? Is it inflationary? Is it going up? Are they minting coins? Right, Because you don't want to get into a scam token where the tokens keep going up. So anyways, let's get into the first screenshot here. And I'm going to just put this over in the last three months here. Uh, let's do six months. So... Pepe's fairly new, but if you look at the price, okay, everything pretty much pumped in in March or May. But if you look at the total amount of holders, and when I say like Pepe's chart is pretty bullish one in terms of on-chain analytics, I'm not talking about price. I'm just talking about how many retail users or whales are actually holding the token and how many keep buying more of the Pepe. How many more people are getting into this? It kind of reminds me of Bitcoin. You look at the Bitcoin charts because of the ETFs and the adoption. Pepe continues to do this. Uh, just for your information, I don't hold Pepe. I wish I, I held Pepe. I wish I bought it early. I think it's too late for me to buy. Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think it's too late or not. It's not too late. But let me just show you this. From April 6th, okay, it shows that you had 200,000 total amount of Pepe holders, okay? In June, 250,000. In August, around the end of August, you had 279,000. And up till today, October 5th, you had 290,000 total Pepe holders. Whether price goes up or down, the Pepe holders are just way too strong. And I'm going to show you in terms of like, this is not just empty wallet addresses. You could look at the supply distribution as we get into the video here. Okay, so this is one thing that I look to look at too, is when you see coin market cap or you see coin gecko, one of the first things that you look at is total supply, the tokenomics. And if you don't understand tokenomics, I just recommend uh, educating yourself on tokenomics because you want to know total supply, distribution, vesting schedules, etc. Because let's say a whole bunch of VCs got into um, an early raise of Pepe. When is the dump schedule going to happen? Meaning when are their tokens going to be vested? And most likely, majority of them are going to start to dump because they want to take profit. They've been holding for so long. And you also want to know if supply is going up or down. If you look at this, the total supply of Pepe is $422 trillion. And it has all been out and it's not going anywhere. If I zoom out to a year on this, 
the total supply really hasn't changed. It's flat. And this is what you like to see in terms of on-chain analytics. Okay, so when I looked at this chart, I was just, I, I was surprised. I was shocked. Uh, here's another great thing. Okay, so let me just go to the six-month chart. We could scroll a bit better. Okay, this is what really impressed me in terms of Pepe. The supply on exchanges, okay, from what I've seen, and I took a look at, you know, some good coins, you know, I'm not going to name the coins, but the la I'd say 90% of the charts on the on-chain analytics, the supply on the exchanges has gotten higher. So meaning that either retail or big whales are moving the supply of a token on the exchanges, probably waiting to dump. But if you look at the supply of Pepe, it is going down on the exchanges. Supply on exchanges for Pepe is going down, which is really nice, okay? Maybe they're putting in some staking. Maybe they're putting in cold wallets. I don't know. But on the flip side here, if you look at the supply outside of exchanges, so the supply on the exchanges are going out, meaning, well, it doesn't necessarily mean because they could also sell on different platforms too and different token, different chains. So look at this. The supply outside Okay, supply outside of exchanges keeps going up, which is good. So if it's not an exchange address, it's probably a retail wallet or a whale, and their supply goes up. So that's a strong community when I look at this. And like I said, I don't hold it. I, I wish I held it. Uh, anyways, um, maybe I'll consider twice getting into it because just the amount of holders is just pretty crazy. I'm going to take a look at its all-time high and how far we are down from the all-time high. Okay, here, here's another chart that I like. Uh, supply held by top addresses. Okay, so this has been ranging up, down, up, down. This is fine for me. Because one thing you don't want to see is the supply held by top addresses, meaning owners and whales. If they don't believe in their own token, you're probably going to see this. Okay, a slope. Now, we look at supply held by top non-exchange addresses. Okay, non-exchange addresses. I think, I think we already showed this, but the top held by top non-exchange addresses. Actually, this is pretty bullish. So a top non-exchange address would probably be a mega whale, an owner, um, an early advisor, and that keeps going up. So I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I, I, I was like, is that just a different chart that I'm looking at? Okay, we're going to look at this first. This is the chart for, uh, let me just scroll out here. Okay, this is the Pepe supply distribution by the number of addresses. Now, this doesn't mean um, because you could have a fake chain, not a fake chain, but a chain that might manipulate and just create a whole bunch of random wallets. And then you've got a whole bunch of holders, right? This is by the number of addresses. Okay, so we're not talking about what's in their wallet. I'll show you in that in the next chart. Okay, so anyone that holds um, from one Pepe to, to 10 Pepe coins, look at what is happening here. It goes up. From 10 to 100, it keeps going up. From 100 to 1,000, it keeps going up. Okay, so it continues. It continues. Like, I'm a broken record, but it's just, this is bullish. When I look at this, it's just, it amazes me. So even, <laughs> even the billion uh, dollar coin holders is just, um, it, it's truly amazing. That's why I said, like, I have never seen an on-chain analytics or, or analysis, like, when I was doing this for any coin um this is like i said it's probably like the perfect chart that i'm reading here so that was by the number of addresses okay now we're going to talk about supply uh the balance of addresses okay so this is where it kind of makes a difference we don't want to see just wallet addresses because anyone can put 0 0.01 of a pepe or 0 0.01 of a coin in a wallet and say that we're growing but okay from zero to one uh from one to ten they accumulate or they're growing from 10 to 100 it keeps going up 100 to 1000 it goes up a thousand okay we can't see that um 10,000 100,000 100,000 to 1 million pepe a million to 10 million and it keeps going like okay we dip so at least we saw something abnormal which okay went uh these holders in may took profit okay so Pepe had a, a big spike in terms of price. Uh, you know what? Let me just put on price on, on top of this. Okay, so uh, March. March, things starts a pump. Uh, all, all coins 
So this is where Pepe dumped. Pepe dumped from here. Uh, yeah, it dumped from there when we had a big spike. But then those who dumped got wrecked because it went up. So anyways, when you look at this chart, it's just it's just amazing. So that is Pepe. Let me get into what's left for Pepe. We did number of addresses, etc. Um, let me talk about the, the next hidden gem, okay? Uh, um, I've been talking to like six or seven CEOs a week, just talking about partnerships uh, for Donor.Finance, how we can collaborate, network, um, you know, possibly have them a sponsor of Donor.Finance to, to help our need, our cause, while uh, doing some marketing services or sponsorships. Uh, I ran into this great chain, great company, completely docs team, great marketing, great CEOs, visible, right? One of the main things that I like to look at is, is the team there, are they doxed? Uh, is what they're doing trending or or not? Or, you know, my other question is, is it another metaverse? Is it another P to E, play to earn kind of thing? Because I you know, honestly, I think play to earn is, is dying, I think only a certain few, a very small percentage of, of play-to-earn games will last. I just don't think they have enough runway. They don't have enough community. And the tokenomics of play-to-earn, it's too hard. Majority of the people that you're attracting is crypto. All they want to do is sell. So anyways, uh, the next hitting gem, I'm going to talk about that probably next week or in two weeks. But... Um, this this hidden gem talks about decentralized AI, okay? Decentralized AI and security, and uh, on what chain they're on. Um, I'll disclose that later, but I I think they're a great buy because they're down quite a lot from its all time high. But one of the main things that I I looked at is they're trending in AI, okay? Trending in AI, and they're actually doing one of the the main tests of of what they're including is like GPU benchmarking, as well as providing a layer security. On AI. So, anyways, um, I don't want to disclose too much information. If you do know who it is or who I'm talking about, leave leave some notes in the comments. But um, I'll probably disclose that in two weeks. Uh, I think they're a great one to watch, especially what they're doing. There's no not much real competition in terms of securing what's out there with security and AI agents and all that stuff. So, anyways, let me get into the last piece of this. This is uh, sharing. So, let me come over here, share token. And we're just going to go over the on-chain analytics here. So let's just go to the last six months. This is what you want to see. I'm not doing anything but just showing you what the data is. Uh, so let me go to the last three months and take a look at this. Let's go to the last six months. Okay. So price versus um, price versus total amount of holders. Okay. So sharing went from 6,300 holders to about 4,776 holders. Now, this could be because they they converted to slp3 i think is what they do maybe but um this just shows that total amount of holders continues to go down along with price okay so the total supply uh let's go to six months let's go to a year the total supply so from what i recall the total supply was supposed to be very low maybe like you know 500 million because of the amount of holders and the team was gonna to lock up etc and it shouldn't have been over, not even a billion. But if you look at from October of 2023, just right, right just look up on my screen. You have 2.27 billion. Okay, so the question here for, I forgot your name, whoever was asking me on Telegram. Um, this is one thing that concerned me is the supply goes from 2.3 to 2.7, 2.8, 2.79 billion, okay? So it's just on an incline. And this is not something that, that I'd like to look. You looked at the, the last Pepe chart that I showed you of total supply. Usually you should see that flat because they've been out for a while sharing and the, the tokens have been vested. So my question is, why is this going up? But I'm just showing you the on-chain analytics. Okay, so here is uh, the next chart. Uh, the supply outside of exchanges okay so the supply outside of exchanges went up which is good and then the supply after june the supply outside of exchanges is going down so meaning retail holders are going down uh could, could be even whales or wallet big wallets now the supply on the exchanges this is what kind of doesn't worry me but it just it, it's questionable why is the supply on exchanges going up? Now, is it, does that mean everyone that holds a sharing token 
is putting on supply on the exchanges. I'll show you who the top uh, the top three or four holders are. If you can see this on chain, we'll show you it on um, on ERC twenty tokens, which is Qcoin. Qcoin holds majority, I think, of the tokens, and you'll see that. So the question is, um, why does one point eight eight billion share? You know, why is that on an exchange? So um, let's look at supply held by top addresses okay supply held by top addresses that goes up that's good supply held by non top addresses it ranges okay uh let me show you supply held by top no let's go to by balance okay let's look at the uh the supply distribution for by number of addresses now th this doesn't mean by by every wallet that holds you know more than one share this is just any address okay okay so this is for the last six months um point one of a share is not worth much so let's start at uh, one to ten share this is for the last six months okay f so 100 share i think that's a dollar maybe uh, one thousand to ten thousand okay that from 1,000 to 10,000 is going down from 10,000 to 100,000 tokens. So let me just do the math on that. So if you hold $150 worth of share, people who hold 150,000 share, uh, what is happening? It is going on the down incline from 2,300, 2,400 down to 1,500. Okay, from 100,000 to 1 million share, the wallet addresses is going down. Okay, and from 1 million to 10 million share tokens, you had about 209 holders that held anywhere from a million to 10 million. Okay, and then it is down to 173, 209 and 173. And then from 10 million to 100 million, it ranges here. Now let's take a look at the supply. So this is uh, what counts. You want to look at the the wallets and what's inside the wallets here. You take a look at um, not just wallet addresses, but um, what's inside the wallet because it's supply here. So we talk about from 10 million to sorry from 10,000 to 100,000 tokens. It is on a decline from 100,000 to 1 million. It is going down from 1 million to 10 million. It went up and then it ranged down and it came back up a little bit from 10 million to 100 million. Uh, it went from 15% of holders down to 9.15%. So let me just show you while, while I scroll out from here. Let me just show you here. I'm just going to shift right and then you'll see the percentage. So that's the on-chain analytics for sharing. You saw on the, the top right here, you could look at from the date of April. You know, let me scroll out and I'll just show you maybe from lifetime, from all time. Supply distribution here. Let's go by balance addresses. This probably makes more sense for a lot of people. Okay, so from what counts here is probably from, eh, probably from 100,000. Okay, this is 2020 from 1 million, uh, 1 million to 10 million from 20, 2021 of May. 2021 of May went down uh, from 10 million to 100 million. Okay, we went from, down 67%. So this is a, a big one here. So 10 million to 100 million, uh, sorry, my chart just adjusted. Yeah, you went from 31.94%, okay? F you know, holders that had 10 million to 100 million share token down to, so it was 34%, down to 9.14%, okay? Let's look at from one to 10 million shareholders, one to 10 was 31.48%. And down to 15%. Okay, so interesting, interesting chart. Anyways, that's it for the video. I'm just showing you the on chain analytics for everything. Uh, when I look at Pepe, like I said, Pepe it is, it just wows me. Anyways, that's it for the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one.